The word Baroque refers to architecture, music, or art filled with exaggerated details and elaborate characteristics. This art movement began in Italy in the 16th century and lasted through the 18th century. During the 16th century, the Spaniards began constructing churches all over the Philippines to signify their presence and commitment to establish Catholic faith in the country. The four churches on UNESCO's list of Philippine Baroque architecture are the San Agustin Church in Manila, Santa Maria Church in Ilocos Sur, San Agustin Church in Ilocos Norte, and Santo Tomas de Villanueva Church in Iloilo. Compared to their European counterparts, Philippine Baroque churches are shorter and more fortress-like due to the fact that they're built to withstand earthquakes and other forces of nature. This is where the term Earthquake Baroque originated. These structures are made up of coral stone or bricks, consolidated with mortar made of sand and lime, sometimes boiled with mango leaves and rice straws for two nights. The features that make them Baroque are the bell tower, which was used to signify the time, call people to worship, and to serve as a lookout against enemy invasions. Buttresses, built against or projecting from walls, and serving to support and reinforce them. Convoluted ceilings, decorated with paintings, gilded cavities, and other extra sculptural elements. Cornices, the uppermost section of molding that runs across the top of a wall or right below a roof. Crenellations, built around the top of a structure with gaps to serve as a fighting platform and vantage point for soldiers. Cupolas, which project from the top of the roof to allow heat to vent out of the church. Vineals, sculptured ornaments, usually in the shape of a leaf at the top of a gable or furniture. Gilded statuaries, portraying Catholic saints. Gold symbolized joy and that what is precious and valuable. Huge pillars, columns that stood perpendicular from the ground and supported the beams of a large roof. Niches, decorative recesses set into the wall, usually as a space to display statues. Pediments, typically triangular, were used decoratively over doorways. Pilasters, which projected slightly from a wall and gave the appearance of a supporting column but had no real structural purpose. Retablos, devotional paintings of religious figures or events on carved or gilded wood. Rosettes, round windows usually filled with stained glass, divided into segments similar to a rose's petals. Small octagonal windows, accentuating the number 8 as an important number in the life of Christ. Stained glass, often containing religious symbols, used to control light and enhancing the beauty of a setting. Thick walls narrowing to the top in order to provide greater stability during earthquakes. Trapezium-shaped gable ends, which had two angled sides that let water flow down easily and were less vulnerable to high winds because of their compact structure. Trompe l'oeil, which means deceive the eye, a painting technique using realistic imagery to create the illusion that an object existed in three dimensions. Images were painted on ceilings of churches. And twin columns, which emphasized outlines of the building and highlighted entrances, thereby making it look more symmetrical. Because of their clear western and eastern influences, these buildings tell us a great deal about our culture and heritage. They showcase the creativity and resourcefulness of the Filipino builders who are faced with the challenging task of working with limited time and resources. And despite that, we're able to create something both beautiful and functional. It reflects us, the Filipino people, and also an era, a period in history, making Baroque a part of our past as well as our future. But all this will disappear if we stop caring. Support the protection, preservation, and promotion of the National Cultural Heritage Sites. Volunteer to be a part of projects for the preservation of these structures.